Let's let's roll this straight away. Coogan Cassis, IFL TV, MTK Global Ranger, Gibraltar here. Two seconds, literally two seconds. Dillian, you've got to go and do Sky Sports, but yeah, you're here. Loyalty. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. We've we read together since 2014 and 15. 2015, I think September 2015, and it's been ups and downs along the way. But one thing we do, we do good business. Some, you know, I mean, once a business game, we do good business. You know, people can say whatever they want, but he's all right, I'm all right. You know, we'll get the job done, that's it. I appreciate you know? that, but I was mad, I meant Coogan. Oh, okay, you got fuck it. Eddie Ends sucks. <laughs> Eddie Ends a bum. Cheers, man. <laughs> Come do your interview. <laughs> Thanks for the words, man. Cheers, man. Coogan Cassis, Eiffel TV, MTK Global. Eddie Hearn, we're in Gibraltar. We are. Thanks for bringing us here, to be honest with you, because otherwise we'd be looking at, the, no disrespect to the Wembley Arena, but we'd be looking at that balcony that overlooks the Wembley Arena, but we're looking at loveliness at the moment. We're very lucky people. I mean, we're lucky to be breathing, but we're lucky to be here in the sunshine, taking in experiences like this and, and getting ready ahead of a massive fight. Everyone's nervous. You know, I just watched Povetkin whack the pads there and, you know, you cast your mind back to that sunny evening at fight camp last August. It's going to be full of drama, mate, this weekend, and I'm glad we're here. It's been a complete nightmare. Night, I mean, so difficult. Listen, it's difficult to stage an event like this when it when the world's normal. But we've got this kind of sick mindset that if it's really difficult and people are saying you shouldn't really do it, you do it. And now we're here to see everyone on that plane. You know, you were on it. It was a great feeling, wasn't it? It was like, especially amongst the fighters. I think they realised that they were involved in something special. So I'm really glad we did it. Ed, listen, I'm not going to go into the whole kind of heavyweight scene about in regards to Anthony Joshua, but Dillian White, for you, you've been with him for over the last sort of five or six years, ever since the Dillian White defeat to Anthony Joshua, but you, you've genuinely wanted him to kind of get to where he's got to. You want him to win a world title, and you've kind of, you have backed him. We know Joshua means what he does to you, but Dillian White does mean a lot to you as well. Yeah, because I respect Dillian White. You know, um, Dillian White... By the way, you know, people say about, oh, we've been loyal to Dillian White. Dillian White's been loyal to us. You know, he's had, he's had opportunities to go elsewhere, but he wanted to stay with Matrim, he wanted to stay with me, and I respect him a lot. We don't always get on, I think we do lately, but early on. I mean, he wanted to kill me several occasions. Um, but I do respect him, I respect his hustle, I respect where he's come from, I respect his, what he stands for, I respect his work ethic, I respect his fight ethic, and he's a tough motherfucker. And like he said there, you know, they said to him, oh, you ready for this massive occasion fight your life? And he went, mate, he went, I've been in much bigger fights than this. Not in the ring, but, you know, all throughout his life. So this is fun to him, but we can't hide the fact that this is massive for his boxing career. And he must win on Saturday night. He must win. We know Dillian White's been taking these kind of fights and every time, like the Parker fight, etc. And you're looking at, and also the Oscar Rivas fight, and you're looking at him and you're thinking to yourself, why do you need to be taking these fights? Because but you've answered that on multiple occasions, so has Dillian, that he wants to be in these kind of fights. He doesn't want like, kind of gimmies. But in hindsight, is there any regret over Povetkin in, in the summer? No, because he was dominating Alexander Povetkin. You know, he was on top. He looked like he was about to end the fight. And he walked on to a, just a, an absolute perfect uppercut and got knocked out. You can't worry about the past. You can't start thinking what if or should have done that, should have done that. You did it and that's what happened. Deal with it, come back stronger and win. And that's what he's done. He's done the first parts, he's dealt with it, he's come back stronger, now he's got to do the winning part on Saturday and that's what matters, you know. And, but people people respect Dillian White because of all the things you just said. You know, he loves to fight, he loves competition. And by the way, tell me a bad Dillian White fight. You know, I mean all the big fights he's been in. Tell me about Dillian White fight. You know, I mean the Marius Wack fight where he was about 21 stone. He even made that entertaining. But let's look at the, you know, the big Dillian White fights that he's been in. Derek Chisora one, Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora two, Oscar Rivas, Alexander Povetkin one, Alexander Povetkin two. Fucking, and that's why he does unbelievable numbers. That's because he gives you value for money, and he loves to fight. But you know, this is this is this feels a bit different this time. This is this is. I'm, I'm extremely nervous, extremely nervous, because it just, and, and I secretly, you know, although I'm, I know how nervous I'll be on Saturday, I can't wait, because these are the nights you live for, where they do their ring walk and you just go, fuck, it's on now, this is it, this is the moment. And, um, and, my, and being here makes it, you know, it puts an edge on it. You know, we've just turned up, we've just done the work out here. Tomorrow we'll be at the, um, in the public gardens for the press conference. It's got that big fight feel, hasn't it? 
How are you going to manoeuvre him into a world title shot, considering that you're obviously in the middle or coming towards the end of kind of confirming a fight with AJ and Fury, which obviously ties up all the belts? How are you going to manoeuvre Dillian White into a world title shot? Do you know what? Honestly, I worry about that Sunday morning. Like, there's so much on this fight that we know that, that Alexander Povetkin is mandatory for the WBC title, but there's no mandatory being called. We know the WBC are going to allow the two Fury AJ fights. But with this fight, this would regain his mandatory position. How long he has to wait for that fight? Right now, I couldn't really care. I just want him to win. So we'll deal with that on Sunday and we'll be pushing him you know, into as quickly as we can for a shot at the World Heavyweight title. But that would be a lovely problem to have. Um, who's the... Who's going to benefit from the delay? Obviously, the fight was called for November, um, almost like three months after the original fight in fight camp. But this delay of like six, seven months, who's that going to benefit? I don't know. I think normally, for a normal individual, you'd say Dillian White, wouldn't you? But he's not the kind of guy. He, he's not a deep thinker, is he? He doesn't dwell on things. You can't imagine him sitting at home going, oh, you know, I can't believe that happened to me. He just dust himself down and go again. So I don't think it's going to make a massive difference. Um, I think you know Povetkin was obviously on a on a roll, but don't forget Povetkin was hurt in that fight as well. So I think it's going to suit both of them. I think it'll be a better fight actually um, for taking part taking place now. Um, yeah, I mean you can you can debate it, can't you? you? Can talk about pros and cons, but it's going to be what it's going to be, which is incredibly violent, and someone's going to get brutally knocked out. This ain't going to be a points victory or a stopped on your feet this is going to be a brutal knockout on Saturday night and we hope it goes our way um, this fight here obviously headlines uh, a card in Gibraltar with many other fights and quite a lot of pick and fights as well uh, the old cliche but uh, Cheeseman uh, Metcalf and McKinson Congo etc even Webb and Pfeiffer all these fights kind of they're all 50-50 fights um, the only one you know I think you got you got Congo Mickinson, you got um, Cheeseman Metcalf, you got Kamari against Baker, you have got Webb against Five. They're all 50-50 fights. I think Fabio is a favourite against Molina, but he hasn't really boxed at that level either. And Molina really fancies it. You know, you saw him today with his team; they fancy it. So it's a tr- it's a great card. But you know, that's going to entertain us. But it's all going to come down to the main event. That's what it's all about on Saturday night. Remember that night in the garden? You know. Was, I drove home that night, I don't know about you, but I was completely numb. I couldn't believe what I'd seen. And you're going to see even more drama on Saturday. Just kind of moving away from this card, um, tickets went on sale obviously recently for, or yesterday for Canelo and Saunders. You've done over 20k already. 5,000 we're up to now. I mean, you know, um, as I said before, Canelo and AJ remind me of each other in a lot of ways, but also <laughs> in terms of selling tickets, there's no one like them. No one compares to Canelo and AJ. I've never seen anything like it. Um, we are going to have 70,000 at the Dallas Cowboys. It is going to be the most incredible event. I'm going to put everything into the production of that event, the undercard, you know, just massive, massive sinker de Mayo. I'm, I'm blessed to be promoting that event. So um, a tremendous start at the box office. And general sale doesn't even start till, I think, Friday. I know this isn't really your department, but if for people that kind of thinking about, oh, I want to go out there because there's so many, obviously, tickets available for Canelo Saunders from the UK. What would kind of your advice be? As always, you have to check the regulations, which is without reason to travel at the moment, you can't go. Um, And, you know, some Brits are working in America, they'll be there, but, you know, to go for that that fight, check the regulations. Um, because of course it's, it's extremely strict at the moment in terms of leaving the country and you have to follow the rules You know I'm going to ask you an update on if anything's occurred over the last few days with AJ Fury uh, can you tell us anything? Yeah lots been occurring I'm actually on my world travels next week to go and try and finalise a few deals around the world uh, to get things moving um, it's a lot of really positive conversations I had a good chat with Bob on Monday night He's working hard, we're working hard, we're making a lot of progress. And yeah, as I said now, we're sort of approaching the period of let's try and close these these site deals and that'll be the number one priority for next week once this is done. How many sites is it between currently at the moment? I don't know. I mean, look, we're, we're still exploring a number of opportunities and, and offers. 
um, genuinely, like how many of those could come into fruition. I don't know. I mean, I'm very confident that there's five or six players right now in the market who are genuine and real. Um, one of which, of course, we've dealt with before and we trust. And, and um, you know, we, we, me and Bob the other day, we were talking about Wembley. You know, we were saying, is there any way we could speak to the government and say, can we get 100,000? You know, what if we go in July? You know, they've got the Euros there and I don't know. It's financially difficult to, to take that choice, but I don't want to get people too excited. I probably shouldn't have even said that, but it would be pretty special, wouldn't it? Um, but, yeah, next week on the travels to, as I said, try and close some of these deals. I do want to rectify some comments that, uh, well, in an interview we did with Razza the other day, which was kind of taken a little bit out of context about some of Frank Warren's con uh, comments about him saying that he didn't want to fight till the end of the year. He didn't actually say that. So, uh, I didn't hear the interview anyway. Okay, I, I well, said, that was no, a mistake on, on, on our behalf, to be honest with you. Well, but, it's not yeah. the first one. So, yes, mate. No, no. No, but I, just, I said to Bob the other day, I said, Bob, like, not being funny, but do you guys want this fight? He's like, of course we want this fight. Like, it's the fight. I said, well, can we see the energy? Can we see the mojo? And he was like, yeah, yeah, OK. I said, because we know it's difficult to stage fight. Look, listen, mate, we're in the fucking rock of Gibraltar here. You know, I mean, how difficult was this to pull off? If we pulled this off, we can pull off a site fee for the biggest fight in the world, even in the middle of a pandemic. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard, but that's what we do. I actually prefer it like that, in a weird way. So, and he was like, yeah, no, no. So I got, it was a good call because I really got the flavour that everyone was on board, which I thought, you must be because you signed a contract. So, um, yeah, we've just got to, you know, we've got to go and do the business. Is the date of the potential fight between AJ and Fury dependent on the venue? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but not like November, December. What's in play is a June, July fight. That's it. It's not... OK, can we do this in November? Because then the guys are going to want an interim bout and then it all gets messy again. It might not be undisputed. No, this is the fight. Now let's find a way to do it. So there is no contingency plan past no. June or July at the moment from all sides? No, no, it's the only fight we want. It's signed, it's agreed. Just close the venue. So that 28 days is around 20 or 21 days now. So, I mean... Are we expecting a confirmation in the next 21 days? Yeah, that's that's the plan. You know, that's that that date was put in place by the parties to put pressure on ourselves. The fighters need to know. You know, AJ's pretty much started his camp now. He's been training since Bulev. He wants to fight. Fury's not fight, fought since the Wilder fight. He wants to fight. And sooner or later, if we don't get to that time frame, both guys will say, well, OK, well, I need to fight. So, And, and we don't want that. No one wants that. They only want AJ Fury, and we've got to deliver it. Um, I want to talk about your May the First card uh, on pay-per-view, headlined by Parker and, and Chisora. A tiny bit of criticism about, which you always get anyway, so it's kind of standard amongst a very small select amount of people about whether it's pay-per-view or not. You get that all the time, but um, can you talk to me about why this card is pay-per-view in, in your eyes? Okay. Add up the purses, right? realise we haven't got a crowd, and ask yourself, how the fuck do you do that fight, that card? without being pay-per-view. Now, people will say, yeah, but you didn't have to stick all those fights on that card. I wanted to. And I haven't got the dates to put everybody else on other separate cards. So what you've got is you've got five or six fights that would headline any Saturday night fight night. And actually, even Parker Chisora wouldn't because it's too much money. Um, and probably even Taylor Jonas wouldn't. But you've got them on one night. Once again, same, same rule applies, doesn't it? If you want tremendous value for money and you want a great night of entertainment... Tune in. If you don't think it's worth the money, don't tune in. But I got a, I, I had a good result today when they announced the Ruiz Ariola pay per view and the undercard and said it was fifty bucks, forty quid. I looked like a saint. So, you know, um, yeah. You've not finished with that card though. You've two, announced two yeah. more fights. One, one big fight uh, and one, you know, decent fight. So yeah, it's, it's a fucking unbelievable night of boxing. Unbelievable. Um, so again, same old. Like I wouldn't be doing like if if the money was there to do it non pay per view, I would do it non pay per view. It's not. So there you go. I put a question out yesterday about which I'll ask you your opinion about it about UK or Ireland's next pay per view star that hasn't already headlined the pay per view show, and I'm talking about an Anthony Joshua. I'm not talking about they could. But you'll never see an. I don't think you'll ever see an Anthony Joshua again. You've you've never seen an Anthony Joshua before him, 
and you won't see one after him. He's a freak of nature. Does that not worry you, though, that no, there's no one no. coming through that kind no, of no, has because, that potential because, to, to no, be no, like no, him? Because we've not seen it before. So what we've got is we've got a number of tremendous young fighters, superstars coming through. But AJ is not something that comes in every cycle. I've, we've never seen it before. We've never seen a fighter that's resonated with kids, with grandmas, with wives, with husbands, with you know aunties and uncles, and you know. And no one's ever sold like him. So he's a complete one-off. So don't try and compare someone in the next generation to AJ. Just compare them to being their, a star in their own right, um, of which there are many coming through. So who would you say? Give me three examples. Conor Ben, Lawrence Acoli. Um, I mean, so many young fighters. Boatsy. Boatsy in, in uh, America. You know, you got kids like Ammo Williams. I mean, it, you got you got um, Mark Castro. You got don't represent him. Ryan Garcia. You got Devin Haney. You got you, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. But it's not like oh, where's the next AJ coming from? Because there ain't been one before. So boxing will be fine without another AJ. But if we can unearth one, bloody marvelous. Is, will boxing be fine without kind of someone like that to kind of lead the charge? There hasn't been one before him. But it's our job to build these young fighters up into household names. And I think many of them are doing just fine. I know we've got, we, obviously, AJ, we have Fury, we have Dillian White, and these guys kind of are on that scale at the moment. But, yeah, I'll just put the question out because I was curious, you wondered, and... Conor Ben was the name that frequently come yeah. up, and that's but, a fair shout, Conor yeah, Ben. No, but it is, but Conor's got to still prove himself at elite world level. Like the Vargas fight coming up is a big fight for him, big fight. But Conor Ben is doing huge numbers, um, and if he can get to that world level and perform, I mean, and go and win a world title, wow, I mean, then he could be another AJ. You know, but also he's a welterweight. You know, AJ was a heavyweight, he won Olympic gold in London. So, it's, again, you know, don't. don't don't, don't just look to unearth the new AJ, look to unearth the new star. Lawrence Acoli, um, just to touch on him, obviously he's made some comments. This week after his stunning world title win last weekend against Glowacki, um, Marius Breedis, how easy or not easy is it to kind of make that fight? Well, I think Calla phoned me and sort of said, oh, these guys calling out Marius Breedis, you know, for a bit of publicity. And I went, no, mate, it's not. They want the fight. I think it's a very dangerous fight. He has got a mandatory because he just won a vacant title. Prasovic, the Serbian, I think, 19-0. Um, which, again, is a dangerous fight. They're all dangerous. But I think Lawrence's mindset is, I think I'll just go on and fight Bradis because he's as dangerous as Makabu and Gulamari, and I think I can beat him. So why not fight the best in the division? Great news for fans. And after the performance against Glowacki, why can't he beat Bradis? I think he knocks him out. Kala don't. But, you know, Bradis has made good money from the World Boxing Super Series. Bradis wants to move to heavyweight, but Bradis will hang around for that fight if he thinks that there's money in the fight. So we're discussing it. Not in great deal yet, length, uh, length yet, but I'm talking to Lawrence and his team later this week to decide the next step, and we officially want to fight Maris Bradis, and we will do it next, if not certainly this year. Have you found a good deal for his uh, Rolex? These watches, they've gone through the roof, haven't they? Especially a chocolate squad <laughs> I'm... But I bought Chisora Sky Dweller. It was about half the price as it is now. It's only about four years ago. I'll tell you, Cody's lucky he looked good. Otherwise, I would have had to come up with an excuse, to be fair. But, yeah, we'll, we've uh, we've put the order in. It'll be ready in a couple of weeks. I, I remember there was there was a point where you kind of, not promised, but it was a, you win a world title and you get a watch, but then it become a bit, a little bit complicated with well, the amount of people obviously yeah. winning world titles exactly. under your belt. No, you should, what I said to Lawrence... Actually, you should get a Sky Dweller when you unify. But he reckons I never said that. And he's called me out on national TV. So what can I do? Pay up. <laughs> I bet you wish you never said that in oh, the first place. I probably didn't even say it. I probably never even said it. But Lawrence O'Connor is different for you as well because he turned professional with you and you've seen the journey to 16 mm. fights and winning everything at domestic European level and then winning a world title. People like Cal, your fire is the same for you because AJ, yeah. these guys turn professional with you. Yeah, no, but you always you know, have a greater relationship with, with those fighters because of Callum Smith, another one, Katie Taylor, another one, you know, and, and it's, it's a tremendous feeling when you remember sitting in the office for the first time with a kid who hadn't even laced up a pair of gloves in the pro ranks and setting out their journey together and saying, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and you're going to become a world champion. 
And when they do it, it, it makes you feel great. So if it costs me 40 bags, it costs me 40 bags. Surely you can find one cheaper than that. <laughs> I know. I was going to see if there's any geezers down the port, you know, with the old uh, the Snide Louis. Joshua Buatzi, uh, just continuing from him, he'll uh, headline a show on the 15th yeah. of May. Uh, Opponent-wise, what kind of card are we looking for for that? Um, he may or may not headline, depending on who he fights, actually. I mean, he's got the, the situation of we're dying out for a big fight for Joshua Buatzi, and so is he, but he's just teamed up with Virgil Hunter. So we'd quite kind of like to have, not a steady fight, but you know, I don't think teaming up with Virgil and jumping in the deep end straight away might be the right choice. So we're talking to Virgil, there'll be an announcement soon. It's a big card actually, uh, a couple of European titles on that card as well. Um, and it could be a world championship fight on that card as well. We're looking to go, we may head up to Manchester for May 1st and May 15th, as you've just found out. So. Um, Chris Eubank, obviously returning to uh, UK after a, a long layoff since obviously the Gale fight, will fight Marcus Morrison. Um, I've seen a little bit of criticism over this fight for, for Chris Eubank just because the, Chris, the, the names that Chris Eubank has been talking about, the Charlos, etc., Billy Joe Saunders, etc. And uh, yeah, can you just kind of talk to me about to, that fight? To, to be fair to Eubank and to Calla, they always said, and they said to me as well, that they want. You know, they wanted to have a comeback fight, if you like. He hasn't boxed for over a year and a half. And, you know, I think the Marcus Morrison fight's a good fight. Marcus Morrison's coming off a great win in Italy that got him in the world top 15. Um, you know, managed by Joe Gallagher, who will always think he can win the fight. And, you know, he'll, he'll make sure he's got Marcus in great shape. He'll have him believing he can win. Very tough fight for Marcus Morrison. But I'd much rather make Chris Eubank Jr. against Marcus Morrison from Manchester than Chris Eubank Jr. against um, David Kliknitsk from from Czech Republic. You know, who no one... Un when do you next out, by the way? He's out in he's September the 2nd. Um, but you understand what I mean. Like, I, I, could, I could have found a different opponent, but why not give an opportunity to a British fighter that actually is thinking to himself, if I beat Eubank, then I've changed my life forever. And you've got Joe, you've got the dynamics, you've got Senior, you've got... I like it. Like yeah, no, I will. I will go with you on this one because I think no, I would rather see Marcus Morrison fight Chris Eubank than David, than, than David Halamenda. Yeah. Who? Kalexis. Did you have you made that name up? No, that is a fighter. Don't diss him on here. No, he, You thought? Oh, do you think I just made that name up? Yes. No, he's he's ranked number nine with EBU. Oh, right, okay. Well, no, I don't know who he is, but I'd rather see Marcus Morrison fight Chris exactly. Eubank, to be honest with you. Well, that's what I did. So what are you even still going on about? No, I'm just asking you about it. But um, So you're asking me for my opinion on something, whether you think it's right or wrong, and you basically think I'm right. I'm not saying if it's right or wrong. You're I'm right. just... Um, I would have done the same thing. No, I'm just saying I would rather have seen Marcus Morrison, what you're doing, with Chris Eubank, than Davy Boy. No disrespect to Davy Boy, because Davy Boy apparently watches IFL. Yeah, no, he does. I spoke to him. I know he does. Um, Show-wise for you now, your schedule kind of from now until so May. May 27, we're in Gibraltar with Vivek in White. April the 3rd, next week in Uzbekistan. Big show. April 10th. Are you going to Uzbekistan? I think so, but I'm on my travels trying to sign a big deal. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try and make my way there. Quarantine permitting. Um, and then April 10, Connor Ben against Vargas. Shannon Courtney against Ebony Bridges for the world title. Um, Savannah Marshall against Femke Hermans for the world title. Fitzgerald? No, not on there. He's on May 1st. Um, Cash Farouk on that card as well. You've, you've really killed my flow here. Anyway, that's April 10th. April 17, Demetrius Andrade against Liam Williams in Florida. April 24, and then we've got Italy. Then we've got May the 1st, we've got Chisora Parker. We've got Katie Taylor against Jonas. We've got Craig Richards against Dimitri Bivol. We've got Eubank against Morrison. And then May the 8th, we've got a little one in Dallas. That's Canelo Alvarez against Billy Joe Saunders. And then May the 15th, we've got Boatze, another world title fight. We've got two European title fights, etc. May the 22nd. May the 22nd or May the 29th is Devin Haney. Against the Linares. Most likely, yeah. And then we're into June. We'll have one show in June. will be Lewis Ritson in the final eliminator for the world title. And then in July, hopefully, AJ Fury. And more importantly, well, not more importantly, really, the return of Fight Camp. Could AJ Fury land on, on 
July the 3rd. Is that a date that's been I discussed? Mean, not really a specific date, but yeah, it's a Saturday night in July. I mean, 3rd, 10th, 17th, 24th, all of those in play. Did you speak to Amir Khan? Yes. What happened? Uh, we're talking about doing his next fight. So we're looking at options. Kel Brook fight is an option, of course, but he's got three or four options. And we are just uh, had a call with him, had a call with his lawyer, just talking. You said previously that you were interested in making Huey Fury against David Price. Any development on that? Um, I've been in discussions with MTK about that fight, and I would like to make that fight, yes. Could that happen on May the 1st? No, it will probably be in June. Okay. On another card that you've got? Yes. Could that be on the AJ Fury undercard? Could be. Could be. So, in summary, everything's good? I mean, yeah. I mean, everything's good, I suppose. I mean, I don't know what you're referring to, but everything's quite wide. But boxing's good, business is good, life is good. You know, still a bit of a ball lake, isn't it? But we're lights at the end of the tunnel. What else is going on? Oh, oh, yeah. I um, So, you know that I always do all these interviews and I say, you know, I say that I'm obviously a bit on the chubby side and, you know, not in the best of shape. And obviously with the Dolce Cabana pyjamas, I was doing that thing the other day. I got approached by um, this great new app called Oro. It's owned by Holland and Barrett and partnered with Loughborough University. And they come to me and they said, Eddie, why don't you actually do something about it? You know, you're always moaning that, you know, you're not in great shape and, you know, you're obviously 40 now and you're representing all the slightly... You're 41, God. 41. I said it in my 40s. And um, so I'm on it, mate. I'm on it. And I've been on it for two weeks... Right? There'll be some social content dropping soon. I've got a personal trainer. I've got a nutritionist. Right? Give me six months. And I'm going to do the... I'm going to, I'll, do, I'll even do some before and after photos. Right? So, let's do the before now. No, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm on it. So I just wanted to give you... And I'm going to be really boring you for the next six months across social media and, and in interviews like this where you'll see a big difference. You know, the traps will start popping out. Obviously, the pack will come out. I'll show you that in the summer. Um, yeah, lats as well. When maybe when you get a shot of me from behind. Yeah. So well, we all obviously wish you the best of luck with that, and hope it all, is, all yeah, pans out. I hope you really support my fitness journey because it means a lot to me. Okay, well, best of luck with that. Do you have any interest in Florian Marco versus O'Hara Davies? Yes. You said yes, like something's already been mentioned. No, no. Oh, only on Twitter yesterday. Sam Jones messaged me. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think Florian's got to decide if he wants to stay at 147 or 140. You know, O'Hara's coming off a couple of decent wins as well. But it's a good fight, isn't it? I mean, any build-up with O'Hara is good fun. And that would be pretty wild. Bit of history there, isn't there? Bit of, a little bit of needle, yeah. yeah. A bit of needle. needle. Um, Hunter, Hunter Hergovic looks like it's... Uh, Michael, if you're watching this, can you reply to my messages? I don't... Like, he keeps saying, oh, no one's getting in touch, and like... And I, I'm sending him DMs on Twitter, DMs on Instagram. I just want to try and make the fight, but I don't know. Okay. Michael, if you're watching, please reach Eddie Hearn. Um, will you have interest in making the rematch between Cash Farouk and Lee McGregor after oh, Lee yeah. McGregor's stunning yes. win over Gurphy last yes. week? I thought that was a brilliant win by Lee McGregor. Great performance. Shout out to him and Ben Davison for that. For me, the Cash Farouk fight is the fight. I think, you know, until he rematches Cash Farouk. There's a lot of people that feel Farouk won that fight. You know, Cash will box on April 10th, but that was a big statement from Lee McGregor and Cash Farouk's got to follow suit on April 10th. But I would love to make that fight. I think it sells out to Hydro later in this year and we'll see where it goes. Eddie, another person who I'm kind of... Two minutes, literally two minutes. Maxi Hughes, yeah. who beat... Paul Highland Jr. Yeah. the other day has been on a remarkable run during lockdown. Surely there's something that could be worked out with Maxi yeah, Hughes. Yeah, we'd love to. I mean, look, we've got the Warrington rematch coming up at Headingley in September. So why not deliver a big fight for Maxi Hughes there? Deserves it. Oh, incredible run. Absolutely. Um, when will we see fans back in the UK? Are you talking to Boris at the moment? <laughs> uh, we've got... Um, Lewis Ritson goes in June, and I'm going to try and get fans back for Lewis Ritson. But until then, none in the UK. 70,000 in Dallas, though. 
can't wait. Eddie Hearn, have you got anything else you'd like to add? No, we'll catch up tomorrow, no doubt. Oh, we're going to use you this week, so. Right, that's this. I'm here to be used and abused. Don't worry about it. Thank you very much, Eddie Hearn. Oh.